Hey guys, uh, this is Dr. Mungli. So today's question is about a 48-year-old business executive experienced a severe constriction type of pain in his chest and has been immediately taken to hospital. Later, he was diagnosed to having suffered from myocardial infarction due to near total blockage of his left anterior descending coronary arteries. The possible root cause of his blockage is believed to be due to his lifestyle and consumption of type of foods that he consumed regularly for quite long time. Which of the following could have been contributed to the process of his arterial blockage? So as it is clearly written in this particular case stem that this particular person has underwent myocardial infarction. So the question is all about what all the risk factors that could have been in this particular person. So option A to option H are given here. So it seems that there may be more than one choice which will be correct in, for this particular question. So let's move from choice A to choice H and rule in or rule out for each of the causes as a root, uh, uh, as a risk factor for atherosclerosis later leading, it, leading to cerebrovascular or cardiovascular events. Now the first choice is consumption of excess green leafy vegetables. Now let's see what happens if somebody consumes excess green leafy vegetables. So the consumption of green leafy vegetables it is considered to be good because it adds fiber to our diet so dietary fibers are good because it helps in the defecation process and it helps in decreasing the absorption of cholesterol and lipids from our intestine. Not only that, so it has been recently discussed and this is one of the hot topic in uh, current, currently is green leafy vegetables which are the soluble fibers that are present in the green leafy vegetables. They are digested in the colon by the colonic bacteria so fermentation of the uh, the green leaf vegetable by colonic bacteria will release short chain fatty acids and these short chain fatty acids are acetate butyrate and propionate so there is a role of short chain fatty acids in decreasing the glucose tolerance decreasing cholesterol metabolism and all that so which is helpful in decreasing atherosclerosis overall so in that sense so option A should not be a correct answer. It is not a risk factor for atherosclerosis. So that is taken out. Now question uh, option 2. Option 2 says regular consumption of tuna and herring. So the tuna and herring is considered to be rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And omega-3 fatty acids, these are the, especially the linoleic acid. It is an essential fatty acid. So it is good for us because linoleic acid is converted to docosahexaenoic acid and hicosapentaenoic acid which are going to synthesize and make anti-inflammatory mediators and uh, so the and resolve in cytoprotectins and all that so that is a good thing to maintain homeostasis of inflammation so that should not be a correct answer now question uh, sorry option c says active lifestyle and regular visit to health club so the active lifestyle is good because you are burning calories properly so it means you are not uh, your arteries are not accumulating ldls and atherosclerosis process will be decreased so regular visit to health club and all this is good thing so it should not be a correct choice it is not a risk factor now going with the option C or D, option D says regular intake of blue bonnet and bread spread. So the blue bonnet, see if some of you, uh, if you don't know what is blue bonnet, it is a company which produces bread spread. So blue bonnet bread spread, so if you, if somebody is consuming regularly blue, blue bon, uh, bonnet bread spread, so although blue bonnet bread spread is made from soybean oil, palm oil, palm oil, palm kernel oil and all that kind of thing. So it has got a significant amount of saturated fatty acids and trans fatty acid. So there is a significant amount of trans fatty acid in that because of the processing of the lipid there. 
so although it has got polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fatty acid but it also has saturated and transaturated fatty acid so the saturated and transaturated fatty acids or sorry not transaturated trans fatty acids where the double bonds are in trans configuration so saturated fatty acids and trans configuration fatty acids so they are risk thing for atherosclerosis process because they are going to increase the rigidity of the membrane so they decrease the fluidity of membrane and they are one of the risk factor for atherosclerosis so this particular choice seems to be uh, correct so next one option e option e says regular consumption of flax seeds and walnuts so flax seeds and walnuts they contain omega 3 fatty acid that is linoleic uh, linolenic acid so and linolenic acid as i said before it is going to be converted into docosa hexaenoic acid and ecosa pentaenoic acid so they are they are good thing for us so that in that sense option e is incorrect it is not a risk factor for atherosclerosis now type a personality option f type a personality so people with type a personality they will have essential hypertension increase in the pressure blood pressure so and also in type a personality there will be people will have more oxidative stress because of their personality itself and increased oxidative stress and increased cortisol glucocorticoids and cortisol that is released so they may have impaired glucose tolerance means increased blood glucose level and that can be diverted into fatty acid synthesis cholesterol formation so indirectly it can lead to lipid abnormalities so and also increased oxidative stress means they have more reactive oxygen species it means oxidation of ldl can occur and that can lead to that can initiate atherogenesis process so obviously type a personality is not good so it can it is one of the risk factor for atherosclerosis so that seems to be a correct choice again now option d option d says inactive and sedentary lifestyle so inactive and sedentary lifestyle so it means your person is not burning calories it means they are going on accumulating the fat so or whatever the food that is consumed if it is not burnt so if the it will be diverted into especially the glucose is diverted into fatty acid formation cholesterol synthesis so adipose tissue mass increases when the adipose tissue mass increases so that can give rise to glucose intolerance and later it giving rise to diabetes mellitus and lipid abnormality and that's how it can lead to atherogenesis later so that's why so option g seems to be also correct now option h option h says consumption of red wine in moderation it has been studied that consumption of red wine in moderation that is most important here so it will because of the some of the contents that are present in the red wine so it helps in arterial dilatation process and also it, it prevents uh, hypertension and also it has been studied that to certain extent it is going to prevent atherogenesis process so th there are some some good components in red wine so consumption of, of red wine in moderation is considered to be a good thing so it is not a risk factor for atherogenesis so option h it is incorrect so with all this so we have now squared out on option d and that is regular regular intake of blue bonnet bread spread type a personality and inactive and sedentary lifestyle these are the three choices which seems to be these are the choices which are correct for the question that has been asked that's all about this i hope this helped you in understanding or knowing something new here or to revise the concept of atherosclerosis and its uh, risk factors thanks for watching see you sometimes take care